You found the AdamSound.tv video podcast, week 3, 2007, posting every Monday morning from midnight to 7 a.m. or somewhere thereabouts. You can download this communication from iTunes or any RSS-friendly browser or podcast aggregator. Welcome and Shalom in Yeshua, our Savior from Beit Lechem, the house of bread, in Israel. My name's Toma, and today is Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. And I also have a dream. In today's podcast news, we'll look at a DramaticImpact.com podcast of Rob Morris as the Apostle Paul, reciting from Acts chapter 17. This chapter contains one of the clearest verses in the Bible dealing with tribal diversity and equality on planet Earth. I personally see Francois Bernier's 1684 New Division as just that destructively divisive. So I think believers in Yeshua should say tribe, tongue, and nation, rather than race, just like the scriptures do in the book of Revelation. In Israel news, we'll cover an honestreporting.com special report and reflect upon some of Martin Luther King's own comments. In scripture, we'll read the chapter, Isaiah 61. Finally, we'll pray. First, today we celebrate the birth of Martin Luther King Jr., January 15, 1929. When I was two and a half months old, a certain Mr. King stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. and gave his I Have a Dream speech. It rocked our nation. That speech was mostly responsible for sparking the change that brought about the 1964 Civil Rights Act, which made public acts of discrimination punishable by law. Imagine with me Dr. King speaking to the world from in front of Lincoln's statue in our capital. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Those were the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. God bless his memory. Today we remember Dr. King for his courage and stamina under unimaginable pressure. But we also remember today's struggle for the recognition of the world's people by the rest of the world's people. Especially for the recognition of those of our planet who are in dire need of help by those who are wealthy and comfortable. We hope for a day that governed by a superior grace, we will deem the content of character as the single most determining factor in all of society's recognition, promotion, and reward. Factors such as location, skin color, and financial status will have nothing to bear on the true and obvious distinctions of a beautiful character. This takes us to the news from the Christian video podcast scene worldwide. It says in the book of Acts, the amazing, historically accurate narrative written by a formerly non-Jewish person, the apostle and physician Luke, in the 17th chapter of Acts, verse 26, the following true statement. He made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the surface of the Eretz, or earth. Let's listen in on Rob Moritz of Dramatic Impact Ministries during one of his tours to the lands of Paul. Here he is at the Areopagus in Athens, the same spot where the Apostle Paul could have spoken these very same words, although Paul was probably speaking Greek. My missionary journey took me right here to the Areopagus. You gotta understand, these, these men are the kind that spend all day long just listening to and passing on the latest things that are coming down the Roman road here to Athens and hearing new ideas. And so I stood up and took this opportunity and I basically shared with the people of Athens, I said, men of Athens, I can see that in every way 
that you all are a very devout and religious people, for as I <laughs> pass through your city, and as I considered the various objects of your worship, I even found an altar on which it bore this inscription, To the Unknown God. And so the one who you worship, even though you don't know who He is, and you don't know Him, He is the one that I'm proclaiming to you today. You see, the Almighty God, who created all the heavens and all the earth and everything therein, is the Lord of all, and He does not dwell in, in temples made with human hands, nor is He worshipped by the objects of human hands, as though He Himself had need of anything that we could possibly supply to Him. Although He Himself gives life to all things, and, and gives life and breath to everyone. And He's made of one blood all nations that dwell on the entire face of the earth. He's predetermined their, their times and their habitations and their boundaries so that if by any means they might search for Him and seek for Him and grow for Him and, and find Him. Although you know He's not far from any one of us. For even as your own poets have said, in Him we live and we move and we have our being. And we are also His offspring. And so, considering that we are in fact the offspring of God, we should not imagine the very nature of God to be anything made out of gold or silver or, or stone or His nature to be of, of like of art or of man's devising. Now the times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now He is commanding all men everywhere to repent because He has affixed a day in which He is going to judge this world in righteousness by the one whom He has ordained. And He's given assurance to all of us, to all men, that this is true by raising that man Jesus Christ from the dead. Rob Moritz is currently developing a video podcast of newer material on DramaticImpact.com. His site is undergoing a redesign, so watch for those changes. Every tribe of our planet is kissed by the grace of our Maker. May all nations be free from slavery and oppression, which, interestingly enough, is worse now, even with the Internet, than it ever has been. Let the children be free to learn worldwide. Let the inventions of the poor be unilaterally protected. Only King Messiah Yeshua can fully implement a world peace. So let us who call on His name stand for that kingdom with all of our might. Writing our senators, voting with conscience, speaking truth to our neighbors, tithing for the hungry, and praying to God for an end to all tyranny and oppression. Let us continue to podcast, to articulate, and to reveal Messiah Yeshua's kindness until the children can dance freely in the streets without fear of exploitation or violence. In news from Israel this week, HonestReporting.com brings us a unique warning of the nuclear aspirations of Iran. It's a chilling fact that Iran's Ahmadinejad and Khomeini are making genocidal threats of, quote, wiping the Zionist regime off the face of the map. Now in Iran, they don't use the word Israel because they don't believe in the nation of Israel. So they say Zionist regime instead. And Ahmadinejad is every bit as defiant as Hitler himself, and not one representative of the world media seems too concerned about it. Please visit honestreporting.com and sign up for their emails. Why? Because you need to know. Again, Martin Luther King Jr. seemed to have a precognizant grasp of things immediately and profoundly important to world social justice. Shortly before his death, Dr. King had the raw courage to confront the growing Jew hatred of both the Black Panthers and the Black Muslims during a 1968 appearance at Harvard University in response to an openly hateful comment by a student about Zionism. He stated bluntly, when people criticize Zionists, they mean Jews. You are talking anti-Semitism. Also, Georgia Congressman John Lewis who worked closely with Dr. King, observed the following on Martin Luther King Day in 2002. He knew that both peoples, i.e. blacks and Jews, were uprooted involuntarily from their homelands. He knew that both peoples were shaped by the tragic experience of slavery. He knew that both peoples were forced to live in ghettos, victims of segregation. He knew that both peoples were subject to laws passed with the particular intent of oppressing them simply because they were Jewish or black. 
He knew that both peoples have been subjected to oppression and genocide on a level unprecedented in history. And Martin Luther King was not in company by himself on this issue. Indeed, the great W.E.B. Du Bois wrote in 1919, The African movement means to us what the Zionist movement must mean to the Jews. May we all aspire to be world changers and speakers of truth like that man was. And now to the Tanakh. Tanakh, or Old Covenant, is a composite word from the first letters of Torah, Nevi'im, and Ketuvim. Torah is Hebrew for law or instruction. Nevi'im, the prophets. And Ketuvim means, in Hebrew, the writings. These three ancient Hebrew collections of scripture encompass the entirety of what Christians call the Old Testament. So we'll be reading out of Yeshayahu, or Isaiah. Dr. Luke also recorded the historic moment of the beginning of our Lord Yeshua's ministry in Luke 4, verses 18 through 20. Interestingly, Yeshua closed the book of the Torah in mid-sentence as he read the first two verses of the following passage in Yeshayahu 61. Many believe this indicates we are in a divine pause of God's grace until the end of the age of the Gentiles. Where are we in that time frame? Study your Israel news and you'll find out. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the humble. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to appoint to those who mourn in Zion, to give to them a garland for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the old wastes, they shall raise up the former desolations, they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the Kohanim of the Lord, or priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the wealth of the nations, and in their glory shall you boast yourselves. Instead of your shame, you shall have double, and instead of dishonor, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be to them. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery with iniquity, and I will give them their recompense in truth. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their seed shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the Eretz, or land, brings forth its bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for the reading of your word. We want to thank you for Isaiah 61, the book of Isaiah, such a beautiful, beautiful book. Thank you, Father. In the name of Yeshua, thank you for your word. I also want to thank you, Father, for Martin Luther King, and all of his, um, his uh, labor that has brought forth in my country freedom for my brothers and sisters of different skin color. I want to thank you for this uh, battle that Martin Luther King engaged himself in and won. Lord God, there's many uh, battles yet to be won. And I pray that on this day that um, all men and women 
of different skin color may join as one, as it says in the book of Revelation, every tribe, tongue, and nation might join as one in praise to the King of the universe, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah, that he might reign in Zion and teach us from Zion how not to destroy ourselves, how not to exploit ourselves, how not to uh, uh, do damage to the earth that we live on. Father, we want to thank you today that justice surely shall be established in Yeshua the Messiah. He is all glorious and we love him. Uh, according to Psalm 45, he is all glorious within and he's making us as well all glorious by his grace. And we pray these things in the name of Yeshua. Amen. That's a wrap. I'm Toma of AdamSound.tv and you've been watching ASTVVP number three. Thanks for hanging out with me and watch uh, for our podcast on Google, MySpace, YouTube, iTunes, and wherever else the net is still neutral. Everywhere.